This time on North for Perspectives, we're going to be talking about Parks and Recreation Month. And what's it mean to you? Hip, hip, hooray, I'm running again. No, not me, my guest. And Norfolk Public Library has a summer reading program. Is there going to be a book report? You'll find out. And Crew, Commercial Real Estate Women's Group, is here to set me straight. So stay tuned for some great stuff right here on Norfolk Perspectives. Welcome to Norfolk Perspectives. Okay, I got a really special guest on who you know because she's been coming here for a long time. Jennifer Caldwell, Division Head of Public Information. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you, Bob? Pretty good. So, Park and Recreation Month, what's it mean to us? It means everything. Park and Recreation Month was started by the National Recreation and Park Association back in 1985 as just a way to promote physical activity and folks getting out and playing in their local parks, playgrounds, rec centers, anything that your Parks and Rec Department offers for you. It's available this month in July. Because we got a bunch of stuff out there, don't we? We have so much stuff for you to do offered through Parks and Rec. So. so what do you say to the person who says, it's the summer month and I'm bored, there's nothing to do? Get out and play. There we go. Outside. So we're excited this year because this July our theme is Out is In. So we are celebrating all of the outdoor amenities in Norfolk and let me tell you, we have a ton. Okay, I'm going to hit you up for it then. Uh, do we have beaches? We do, seven miles. Up in Ocean View. We sure do. Three awesome. beach parks with free parking. That's yes, right. free parking, showers, restroom facilities, picnic tables at three different beach parks. Now, okay, we have the three different parks, but can you access throughout Ocean View Avenue, though? You can. We have several public beach access points all up and down Ocean View Avenue. So if you want to access through a neighborhood instead of the beach park, you can do that. And we have all of those access points listed on our website. But it's always best. To swim, swim by the lifeguard, absolutely. Speaking of lifeguards, I understand there's, uh, you're going to be using those amenities and the lifeguards for? For a beach walk. Um, we're inviting, this is something different, it's not a normally offered program that we have, but we wanted just to get folks out to the beach to meet their lifeguards and feel safe around them, so we're going to do a two-mile beach walk with the lifeguards. So come out, meet your lifeguard, go on a nice walk, get healthy. Cool. And kind of have a little Baywatch going on. Run down we'll beach? make sure we do a slow run just there, for you. <laughs> okay, there we go. Now, um, we're in urban setting. We are. So, open space is kind of tight, isn't it? It is tight, but there is still plenty of it. We have over 400, um, 400 acres of park space in the city of Norfolk. So, for an urban city, that's still a pretty mm -hmm. large amount of park space. So, in those range from small neighborhood parks to large community parks to festival parks like Town Point Park and Ocean View Beach Park. Now, of course, uh, many of our neighborhoods are tree-lined, and there's median strips in there. We're not going to encourage people to pay, play in the median strips, but it, it, it adds to the ambiance of having open space. Absolutely, it? and um, we have so many city trees that line our streets in the city of Norfolk, just making it a beautiful place to live. So, okay, yeah. now, as, as the viewer knows, I spend not a lot of time, but probably more than I used to at the Norfolk Fitness and Wellness Center, which has the indoor pool. And an outdoor pool. And so there's other pools pool. throughout the city too, right? Yes, we have three outdoor pools and four indoor pools um, for your use. The Norfolk Fitness and Wellness Center is does have an indoor and outdoor pool, so that comes with your membership there. Um, and then we have a outdoor pool in Berkeley, one in Chesterfield, and then indoor pools in Huntersville, Northside, and then the Southside Aquatic right. Center. Now, okay, so if you swim in an indoor pool, does that count as out is in? Not technically, but as long as you're swimming, getting healthy, and doing something fun, we're okay with you're that. You're not going to worry about it? Absolutely not. Jennifer, okay, and, and we think about, and you guys come on to talk about uh, Play Month. Yes. So Parks and Rec is a lot of fun and play, right? Absolutely. So when do you start getting the work done? It is work. Because you've got to do a lot of work to get ready for it. Yes, you guys are playing. We're working behind the scenes to make sure that what you're doing is a good time. I was going to say, how many, I mean, it takes a lot of staff to really make sure that we stay safe in those outdoor environments, right? It does. We have over 600 employees, roughly 400 part-time and seasonal, like your lifeguards and your recreation aides and the folks that, you know, make sure the umpires arrive to your softball game. And then we have 200 full-time employees, so more of like your supervisors and your pool managers and things of that nature. So yeah, 600 folks to make sure that your rec centers and your pools and your beaches and your parks are trimmed and operating correctly. So come out enjoy the outdoors and some indoors if you want during yes. the air conditioning yes but also say thanks to the staff that are there to make it all happen right? absolutely all month of july we have a calendar full of events going on for you to enjoy i was gonna say where can you find out about those events norfolk.gov slash play that's okay. our website now so. what's your what's your what's the one you're most excited about coming up i'm most excited about the beach boot camp class it's not something that we normally offer so our trainer brandon from the fitness and wellness center is going to 
help us get get fit on the beach at sunset. It's going to be awesome. Does this mean burpees on the beach? Burpees on the beach, and I better see you there. <laughs> when is that going to be? That is going to be July 8th. Oh, so I check the calendar. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear that's this sand, vacation excuse. That's some sand in the mouth. Okay, Jennifer, I, the viewer that, that normally sees you on TV notice that there's a wardrobe malfunction going on here. You normally have these five-inch heels on. Those aren't five-inch heels. That's been the question of the studio. Where are your heels? We kick the heels to the curb because we are so busy getting ready for you guys to play that Heels had to go. You're running. We're running all, all around. One of the things you're doing, and this is something that people might not really appreciate with our posts, you're getting ready for some public art? We are. Actually, this week, we will be dedicating a piece of public art in the Broad Creek neighborhood. And Beautiful. again, you go outdoors. Out, you can go outdoors, and it actually is in a park space. It's called Linear Park in the Broad Creek neighborhood. So you can go outdoors, not only in play, but appreciate the beautiful scenery that's there as well. Right. I know that one of the things that uh, was very important to the council member was that we had a walking path through that. So you and can it, just do a leisurely walk, or you can kind of do a quick pace. You sure can. I was just there today, and it's it, the walking path is very nice. It's been paved. It looks great. Even with the humidity, huh? <laughs> Even with the humidity. So, okay. Biking. Yes. Where, where can you go biking around here? So biking, we have the Elizabeth River Trail is our premier biking trail mm -hmm. for the city of Norfolk. Um, so I highly encourage beautiful waterfront views, several little park spaces along the way that you could stop, take a break, restaurants where you can pop over, have a bite to eat. We also have 14. <laughs> You're talking my kind of bike ride. Exactly. <laughs> hey, we have some friends that do um, the, a little bike and brew tour. So maybe you should get hooked up with them and check into that one. So that's well. fitness, but it can be fun. It sure can. Yeah, cool. fitness doesn't have to be hard. As long as you're getting out and moving, we like to call it playing instead there of There we go. Fitness. Well, Jennifer, you may want to hang around then for the next segment because this guy ran for many, many a year, up to 5,000 miles oh, a year. Goodness. That's impressive. You ready for that? I, I'm not ready for it, but I'm impressed by him. <laughs> a little from bike to bike and brew to hip, hip, hooray, we're going to run. I want to thank you for being on the show and sharing all the exciting things that we can do in Norfolk. And yeah, all you got to do is get off the sofa and get out there and do it. Get out and play. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Bob. When we come back, it's all about running. Yeah. Stay tuned. This is the moment I knew his future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. You know, normally when somebody wants to be on the show, they have somebody call and they talk to the producer and whatever. Well, I'm going through the Norfolk Fitness Center the other day, and I hear this voice coming out of the uh, workout room, and on the elliptical machine is Randy Cook. And he says, I want to talk about Hip Hip Hooray. So here you are. Randy Cook, author of Hip Hip Hooray, and there, that title is for a reason, isn't it? Yes, it is. It signifies I've had both hips replaced. I was told I'd never be able to run again. Uh, so two years ago, I decided to get off the couch and uh, to get some exercise, try to lose some, lose some weight, and see if I could start back with a mile at a time. And built up, now I'm doing 20, 30 miles a week. Really? See, that was impressive. And what really impressed me was you didn't miss a beat on the elliptical machine while we carried on the conversation, <laughs> or a breath. Or were you really not breathing and I didn't know it? Well, I, I was breathing, but I, I had to get my workout in. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to put you on the spot. I normally don't do this to a guest. But I, I did read your book. And you're of the age where you should know better than to run, right? You've well, been running for how many years? Well, let's see. I guess I started back in the mid-60s. Okay. Competing, so it's several decades. That's right. So we're of the same generation and the same uh, decade. And here you are running a f what you think is a few miles away, because in reading your book, 5,000 miles a year? Well, that's, that's what I did when I was in college in the, in the early to mid-70s. That was, that was the norm for long-distance runners, and I was running marathons. You know, and so to get into miles, that's what I had to do. So if you wanted to talk to Randy, you had to run. Did you ever sit down? When I was in class. Wow. What got you into doing that? Well, I started off in high school, and I'm, I'm from Norfolk, and I went to Maury, and I played tennis, and I swam, and then uh, I started jogging one summer to see if I can get in better shape. 
you know, for those sports and decided I love running so much I ended up being a long distance runner. And like anything, like anyone who gets into it, you get addicted to it and you miss it if you miss a day. Okay, now you've, you've used a couple of words already and I kind of thought of while reading the book because it's kind of your journal, addicted and excessive, <laughs> you said in pre-take. Were there other words that people said while you were in the throes of marathon running? Uh, you look anemic. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's healthy now. Healthy, right. Because in the 60s, kind of putting in perspective, I mean, it, it, you, you said in pre-tape it was the norm. I don't remember it being the norm in the 60s and 70s to run that many miles. But we were kind of just discovering the exercise world, right? Very true. The marathon boom hit about 1972 when Frank Shorter mm -hmm. uh, won the Olympic marathon. So people began to run more and more. Okay, now let's talk about where I, I was in the 70s, and I, I think I shared this with you, I was in the 70s in Atlanta, and had a neighbor down, I was in my 20s, had a neighbor downstairs who started running when he was 54. I will say, when I got to my 54th birthday, I kept using him as the example. I'll get to it, I'll get to it. I didn't get to it until about a year and a half ago, of really discovering it. So I'm not going to get to the point of running 5,000 miles, right? Correct. So what would, you be, what would your advice to me be? For someone who's starting out, maybe just start off, see if he could do a mile, and do that only every other day. Uh, that's plenty exercise. The, the theory is uh, 30 minutes three times a week you know, is, was a good, good norm. So I would caution you to don't do too much too soon. Okay, now at what point in time, because what I noticed in the book, I mean, you, were, you, you started getting some aches and pains. Is it safe to say you ignored those aches and pains? Uh, yes, yes, you have to run if you're going to be competitive, you have to ignore those little aches and pains, yes. Cook. As my Marine Corps father used to say, just buck it up, huh? Yes. So at what point in time did you decide bucking it up wasn't going to work? When I was limping, uh, when I went to the doctor and uh, took x-rays and he said, your running days are over, it's just a matter of time for you're going to have to have the hip replaced. Now, I can't speak for the viewer here, but when you ended up with the hip replacement, that would be the good excuse to quit and start watching you know, the Triple N on TV 48. But you didn't do that, why? Well, I did, I did quit. There's, uh, as you'll see in the book, 25 years went by uh, between the, both hip replacements when I did not run. When but it, you were constantly looking, though, for something else to true, true, fill up. True, true. I, I was going to the wellness center, the elliptical machine, playing tennis. So, so uh, we got one minute left. What would you do over again, and how would you change it? If I could do it over again, I would stretch, stretch more, and maybe not run as much as I did. Really? <laughs> I can't, no, I can't believe that one. Okay, where's your book available? Because it really was a good read. It's on Amazon.com. Okay. And I also have a Facebook page for the book. It's Hip Hip Hooray, I'm Running Again on Facebook. But it can be ordered on Amazon. Okay. And I just want to challenge the viewer, think of the title, because once you do, you won't forget it. It makes perfect sense. Two hip replacements. Yes. Hence the hip hip hooray. I got it. And I, about halfway to the car, it finally clicked in. That's cool. Randy, thanks for being an inspiration. Well, and just in the me, short Bob. time that I've known you on the elliptical machine, um, I'm out there working it out uh, so I can not lose a breath while on that machine. Thanks a lot. And guess what? If you can't run and you don't want to be outside, you can be in the air conditioning or outside on one of our beaches reading. Stay tuned. There's no place like home. Getting home safely is just a click away. But making sure your child is in the right seat is just one of the steps down the road to safer travels. I don't know how it works. Find the right seat for your little one's age and size. We saw what you told us. There's no better way to get home safely. Know for sure that your child is in the right seat. Get all the facts at safercar.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Well, you can be outside, you can do all kinds of great stuff during the summer, but while you're doing it, you can also read. And Norfolk Public Library has their summer reading program back, and my big question for them, and we brought in two experts, is will there be a book report? Katrina Blackwell, Youth Associate, Lafayette Branch Library. How you doing? Hello, I'm good, and you? Yeah, I'm doing awesome. And Lisa Munson, also a Youth Associate, Baron F. Black Branch Library. How you doing? Great. Good. Is there a book report? There is no book report. Hot diggity darn, give me a book to read. <laughs> <laughs> the year they put a book report in there really took all the fun away. I bet. <laughs> so, okay, so what is a youth associate librarian? 
What do you a, a youth associate librarian is like a, a children's librarian, but without a master's degree. Well, you know, that just spoke volumes to me. We're setting up a segment to talk about book reports, and they bring in a youth associate to deal with me. Uh-oh. What's that say? <laughs> no. Okay. Does that mean you spend most of your time on the floor? Yep. We spend most of our times with, with the kids, um, ages 0 to 17. We plan all of the programs, whether it's for the babies, the toddlers, the teens. That's what we do. Okay, now, because I remember going into the library and Miss Lee was there saying, don't talk, don't get off the <laughs> chairs, you know, stay in, stay in your place. That doesn't happen anymore? That no. doesn't. We're a we family place. Kids. Yep. You encourage kids? <laughs> we, yes, we encourage kids <laughs> to but come to the library. But they can be loud. <laughs> but we have kids zones, and they love the kids zones. So are the kids zones anywhere near the research library? Well, it's it's all encompassing, all right. one library, and we, just one section is devoted to that kid zone, and the kids love it, the parents love it, so it's great. Why is that? I mean, why why do you want to kind of encourage them to interact and get loud with it? Well, we want to start um, creating lifelong readers all the way from birth, and as a family place, we encourage the entire family to come into the libraries, for um, parents to come in and read to the babies starting from birth to read with their older children, for the older children to read, you know, voluntarily. Cool. We want the whole family in. So it's got to be, an, it, it really is an interactive thing. It oh, is. Yeah. Okay, I got to ask, you guys read in voices? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I thought so. That's what okay, we what's your favorite book to read then? <laughs> My favorite book will be, will have to be the belly button book, Sandra Boynton. That the belly button favorite. book. Okay, yeah, how does, can you give me a little rendition of it? How would you read it to the kid? Because that's obviously who they told you you'd be talking to. Because you probably read it enough that you know it, right? Probably. Can I'm it be read on TV? I, if I had it, I would. You, I would who's the main character it. in it? Because I remember the Velveteen Rabbit where you rub the fabric in. Oh, yeah. This one, the main characters are the hippos. They love their belly buttons. They love going to the beach and showing everybody else their belly button. And they're sad in the winter when it gets covered up <laughs> under sweaters. See, there you go. You know it more than, how about you, Lisa? What's, what's your favorite one? Um, I probably like Bark George. And that's something I would read to story time. And that's where the dog eats a cat, a cow. Um, and he says when the mother asks him, now Bark George, he'll say meow. And the kids think that's hilarious. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Now you do that with voice, too? Oh, yeah. So what's, what's his bark sound like? Bark George, uh, the meow. So it'd be like uh, the mother said, bark George, and he said, meow. And I'll say it, or I'll say, um, what does the cat say? And then I'll say, meow. Now, my kids uh, could anticipate the next page. So if I tried to sneak a page and not read it, they would know. Uh, yeah, it's still yeah. the same. Same thing? Same Wait thing? a minute. <laughs> now, do, they, <laughs> do they come in asking for a certain book? Sometimes. Now, how about Clifford? Is Clifford still big? Because he was oh, big yeah. kids. We have Clifford I mean, he is big. Year. I'm sorry. I, was, I didn't <laughs> mean to say that. So he's still... So, oh, yes. Okay, now i got to ask you, when you guys are home, in the privacy of your own home, what do you read? I'm right now really into the Hunger Games yeah. series. Or so, any kind of dystopian novel. Yes. How about, it's the same, same dystopian. Thing? <laughs> yes. Is it an age thing? I mean, is it... You know, Clive Cussler is mine. Oh, okay. that's a good series, but, you know, um, The Hunger Games, Divergent, those are the big hits right now. Are they? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But well, you can watch the movie. You can, but the book is so much more. It's missing a lot. <laughs> okay, yeah. do you, I probably shouldn't ask you this, do you dog ear? Do I what? Dog ear? Oh, fold oh. the pages down. <laughs> well, we no. get plenty of bookmarks <laughs> in the library. Okay, so, so bookmarks. We don't have to. <laughs> so are you, you still reading the a real book, or are you doing it on the uh, electronic book? A little bit of both. Yeah. So with, both. with the book program, with the reading program, do you do it by page, or do you do it by book? How do you keep score? It depends on the age group. If it's a child, you record, read and record by minutes. If it's an adult, every three books you read and record the book and do a review. It's so you do part. have to do a book report? No, just a little little review. That's Minimum it. three sentences. You guys yeah. are sneaking that on me. Is that simple? It's for the is adults. The adults do the homework this time. Now, okay, I gotta, I'm going to ask you, are you, is that your security dog or is that one of the prizes? This is one of the prizes. Cool. Now, and your security dog. My security dog, yes. Um, for the first incentive, mm -hmm. just for signing up, for the kids, they get a scratch art. So they get to do all sorts of designs in the scratch art. 
The second prize, after they read and record 150 minutes, they get this little puppy dog or one very similar Dalmatian. And after they read 300 minutes, then they get a red tote bag or sports bag and a chance to win a Kindle Fire HD for the school Whoa. age. Yes. Mm -hmm. For the babies, which is one, uh, zero to four, they would receive a big bag of books. And for the teens, 13 to 17, they get a Galaxy Tab, tab 3. three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know what you've really convinced me in this few minutes we've been together? That really reading is not a solo act, but it can be really interactive. And to do it as a family, you can have a lot of fun. Oh, and yes. that's the real reason yes. for reading this summer, right? Oh, absolutely. So we go can. to the website, find out more about it. And main thing is walk in the front door of your local library yes. and get, in, get involved. <laughs> that's right. Come visit us. Can I get on the floor with you? Of course. You can. Awesome. <laughs> okay, I'll be showing up then. Thanks a lot. All right, when we come back, I'm going to be set the record straight with Crew. Find out now. Now the big guy comes up with that, hitting 342 with 92 RBIs and 36 Chill raw and prepared foods promptly. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. Okay, when you think of crew, what do you think of? Well, Lisa, when you think of crew, what do you think of? I think of commercial real estate women. It's an organization of business women and professionals, and the focus really is influencing the success of the real estate industry by advancing the achievements of women. Okay, and that's where you're going to set me straight. Okay, Lisa Murphy, Esquire, shareholder with uh, Lee Claire Ryan. And we've got Abby Brassfield, Senior Environmental Scientist with Kerr Environmental Services Corp. And Krista Costa, Vice President for Devaris Real Estate, Inc. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I, I'm going to get it out there. When I think of commercial real estate and I think of the leaders in the industry, I think men, right? Is that, have you heard that before? Sure. That's mm -hmm. the way of the past. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was nicely done. I noticed the lawyer here said, okay, how do we craft the answer yeah. to that one so I don't get in trouble, right? But yeah, let's talk about the ways of the past. Well, uh, Crew was founded in 1989, and we now have over 9,000 members nationally in 70 sites. And so since the late 80s, women have been coming together to join forces and promote one another and try to advance commercial real estate with advancing women's success through com commercial real estate. Yeah. I, the other day uh, there was the conference at the White House and President Obama I think really set it straight about the, the workforce and it's no longer a women's issue because it's a workforce issue. But do you find on a day-to-day -day basis the expectation is when I'm going to call Devaris that some, you know, what do you know about commercial real estate? Is that bias still out there or is it breaking away? I don't, or illegal. Yeah. yeah, I don't think so much anymore. And I think really the, the focus of the organization is on networking. So if I get involved in a gotcha. fabulous development project, I'm going to bring in Krista to do the leasing. And I'm going to bring in Abby to do because the Because you guys have gotten to know each other. Right. So you put together a team. We also have a fabulous um, advisory council. And there's really a focus on mentorship and sponsorship. So there are women who are pillars um, in the commercial real estate industry that are looking back and saying, what, it, what can I help do to make that next level of women very successful and to achieve even more than what I've achieved? So, um, and the other thing about it that's fabulous, I'm in a large national law firm. We have a focus on diversity. But if you're in a smaller company or a smaller business, you may not have access to programs mm -hmm. where you can develop your leadership skills, or where you can even be mentored by a successful woman in your particular field. Well, let me go even a step further, and Abby, I'm going to throw this at you, because these two I did, I'm not surprised by, because when I think of commercial real estate, there's the contract, there's the lease, there's the looking for the build, you know, making the deal. You're on the env environmental side. So what kind of positions are there available in the commercial real estate industry? Well, a lot of the things that we do in commercial real estate are in the planning stages. Okay. So when people are finding land to develop or sites to 
sell to other people. Um, we do a lot of the preliminary work to evaluate the land, to evaluate the buildings. We do environmental site assessments and um, banks kind of require some of that information in order to uh, supply a loan and make sure you are making a sound environmental decision and a good purchase. So to have that expertise really roll in, it's not just the, the contract. And yet I'm finding that with uh, clients coming in front of the Planning Commission and zoning laws and things like that, that there's actually more pressure to do things that are environmentally correct and things are different. We were talking in pre-tape, you know, the demand for the workspace, it's a different kind of workspace now, isn't it? It is. It's evolving. We're seeing people go from hard-walled offices to more open-plan offices, and it facilitates the younger group who are used to doing more collaborative work. Which is exactly what you guys are all about, is collaborating be between each other. Now, you've got some events coming up that kind of will be uh, an opportunity to kind of celebrate women in the profession, but also encourage that, that networking. We right? do. We have two special, um, we have lunch meetings every month, but we have two special events. The Luau, which is coming up this Thursday. Uh, at the Cavalier down at the oceanfront, and then we've got a premier uh, networking event in November, and the headline speaker for that will be Betsy Duke. So there are opportunities okay. for women to, to get involved and to really be inspired. The Luau is one of our more fun events, and it's frankly an event um, that's very well well attended by men as well. Well, I was gonna, I'm glad you <laughs> mentioned that because Jennifer, who, who's also with the organization, sent me a. Uh, a magazine from you, a really cool looking magazine, and the Lu the Lou Algus from last year was there, and yeah, there were a bunch of men in the picture, so you do talk to us? Right, <laughs> and, and men can be members of the organization. So really? We're a, a local chapter of the national organization, but men can be members as well, and we have had men as members in the past. So if somebody's <laughs> interested in, in joining, how, how do they go about uh, doing that? Well, I w they can go to our website, um, CrewHamptonRoads.org. That sounds easy. That's an easy way. Um, we do have requirements as far as numbers of years of experience, and we have all manner of professionals, uh, but we do have um, certain requirements for membership. So you, if you go online or if you want to talk to an existing member, you can feel free to call one of us. Um, you do need sponsors to be sponsored in the organization as a member, but it's great opportunity. We've got about a minute left. I want to ask, I'm going to throw this out to the three of you and just whoever wants to answer it. For that woman that's watching this show today who says, you know what, Bob was right. It is a tough time. Tough. What, what would you say to that woman who wants to break into it? I would say there's no better time than the present. I mean, really, there's a new world order in the sense that, you know, you had the crash in 2008 in real estate. Things are really starting to come to the surface again. I'm working on projects now that were killed years ago because they couldn't get financing or they lost the financing. So there are all kinds of opportunities right now. And if you get involved in an organization like Crew, or even if you decide now's the time to get into commercial real estate, um, you can have access to those opportunities. So the theme in all, all the segments today was just get out of that chair and start getting mm -hmm. active. Thanks for everything that you're doing to raise the awareness, but also providing the opportunity for professionals to get together and collaborate. Appreciate it. We want to hear from you what you'd like to see on TV48, but more importantly, what's going on in your neighborhood. Give us a holler at 664-6510. And as usual, it's a wonderful time to be in Norfolk just because of you and you, you and you. Thank you.